Hey guys, this is Ram and today we're gonna discuss on how looping works in Oracle PLSQL. Well, uh, basically I have made uh, another video series on uh, different concepts so you can check my video playlist on Oracle PLSQL. And in today's video, I'm gonna focus on looping or iteration. Uh, well, basically Oracle PLSQL provides three ways to iterate. The first one is very simple loop and second one is while loop and for loop. Well, uh, let me just start with a simple loop now. Well, a simple loop statement start with a loop statement and it ends with end loop statement. So this is how <coughs> it works and this is a syntax for simple loop statement. And as you can see, it, as I said, it starts with a loop command and it ends with end loop statement. And basically, whatever the code inside this block it's going to execute a number of times or infinite times so let me show you how it works all right so now what's going to happen is when i run this program it's going to execute this debug statement you know infinite times so basically in your real time scenario you have to specify a break statement or exit statement so you have to specify a condition at which point the loop should break so that's this is how you specify that exit condition you can directly specify exit like this or you can just say exit when well the advantage of exit when condition is that you can you, you can specify a condition here like on which statement it's, it should break well that's how simple loop works you have your uh, loop a loop command and end loop statement and you have exit condition well those are the two things and the disadvantage, the disadvantage of this loop statement is that suppose in case if you forgot to specify exit condition it's going to run infinite number of times there's no stop to it so we have to be very very careful while using loop simple loop statement so that's where while loop comes in as a rescue so the advantage of while loop is that it makes this exit condition as mandatory so let me show you how while loop works let me just let me just go through a uh, new screen here all right now uh, what i'm going to do is i'm just going to create a while loop here as i said before the advantage of while loop is that you have to specify a condition uh, before even starting the loop so this is how it works so before actually diving let me just create a counter variable here or let's say index index integer and I'm gonna give it a default value as zero right let's say index one so what I have to do is I have to specify a condition on which it's it it's gonna run right let's say if I say let's say if I have to run a loop five times what I can do is I can say index less than five so what what's going to happen is this while condition this while it's going to check if this condition satisfies if this condition satisfies then it's going to run the loop or uh, in case if condition is not satisfying it's going to break the loop so that's how it works so again as usual you have to start with loop and you have to end the loop with end loop command or statement right and as usual you have to write your you know I try to statements inside this loop right well it looks similar to you know simple loop but only extra head is that you are adding this while and condition so so as I said before uh, it will just check if this condition is true if the condition is true then it's going to execute one loop and it's going to go back to while and it's going to again check if condition is true and it's going to uh, no, run until this condition fails so and one more thing is that we have to obviously specify the increment you know if you don't specify increment this value is always going to be zero and it's going to always satisfy this condition so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to increment y my value to one right so now after fourth fifth loop the condition is not going to satisfy because obviously it's going to be five less than five and it's going to fail and it's going to break the loop all right so now let me just run this one and uh, let me show you the output 
as you can see here it printed loop condition five times and at the sixth iteration index value will be five and it's going to fail that condition well that's how while loop works well the disadvantage of while loop is that you have to explicitly create an index variable and you have to explicitly you know increment this variable so uh, that's where for loop comes as a rescue the advantage of for loop is that you, know, you don't have to create this extra counter variable and you don't need to in explicitly increment it so let me show you how it works right now let me just start a for loop here as i said you don't even need this declaration what you can do is you can straight away go for for and you can straight away declare your index variable and you have to specify in so it's it's actually a for in statement and you have to specify start index and end in index right let me just start the index with one double dot ten and as usual your loop statement all right so let me just quickly explain you have for in statement and you have created an index here as i said the oracle plsql will automatically create a variable for you so you don't need to worry about the declaration and what it's going to does is it's going to take up this uh, start variable start index and it's going to assign this value to this variable so at first it will be index one will be one and it's going to increment by one until ten All right so let me just quickly create one debug statement and i'm going to append one you know index variable here All right oops Uh, so let me just run this one quickly All right so you have your looping here so what it does is it's actually started from one and it looped until 10 so that's how for loop works it's going to increment by one so as you can see one plus one two two plus one three free math and you don't need to explicitly worry about incrementing and one more thing is that let's say suppose if you want to reverse loop this i mean if you want to start from 10 and if you want to end at 1 you can always use reverse command i mean reverse statement now if i run this statement what it's going to do is it's going to start the index from 10. so it's going to start from 10 and 8 and it's going to reach until 1. and uh, one more thing it's not actually mandatory to start the index from 1 can even start at some random number let's say 14 and you can end at let's say 18 it's still gonna work as you can see it started from 14 and it ended at 18 but that's the big advantage of for loop and one disadvantage is that the increment is always going to be by one you cannot increment by two like if you want to increment like 14 to 16 16 to 18 it's not gonna work the increment is always gonna be one well uh, this is about a uh, numeric for loop well this one more for loop called cursor for loop well it's actually used for explicit cursors now uh, what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna make an another video for cursors and i'm gonna explain in that video how cursor for loop work so for now uh, this is it guys let me just quickly recap what we have done today so basically we have discussed three loop structures the first one is simple loop there is no for or there is no while just the loop and loop and exit statement and you have your while loop you know which actually uh, runs until certain condition fails and you have for loop so these are the three statements so thanks for viewing if you like our video don't forget to subscribe us